Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. After having an ominous vision, Sam manages to save his co-workers from a cruel fate. However, the group soon discovers that it will not be so easy to end this brutal death cycle. Today we will recap the story of the 2011 movie, Final Destination 5. Sam, one of the members of the sales division of the Presage Paper Company, prepares breakfast for the other employees before they embark on a corporate retreat. The man is a young cook who has a promising future, but until he finds a good job as a chef, he must work as a salesman at the paper mill to make ends meet. Sam is dating Molly, his co-worker. However, when the young woman finds out that he has been offered an internship in one of the most renowned restaurants in France, she decides to break up with him to not get in the way of his career. Although Sam does not agree with this, Molly stands firm in her decision to break off the relationship. Minutes before the bus leaves, Dennis, the sales manager, appears and orders Sam to go after Nathan so that they can start the trip. Following orders from his boss, the man goes in search of his colleague, who works as an assistant manager in the factory. The two men walk out of the factory and get on the bus, where the other office workers were. After a few hours of travel, they reach a dangerous stretch where a bridge is under construction. Just then, Isaac goes into the bathroom to talk to one of the girls he usually goes out with, and Sam begins to feel a strange sensation, as if something bad is about to happen. The bus stops and the man accidentally cuts his thumb. Suddenly, the concrete begins to crack and one of the cables of the suspension bridge comes loose. The floor is destroyed and Sam realizes that everyone there is in danger. He pulls Molly out of the bus and the others run after them. Startled, Candace clings to the railing of the bridge, but ends up falling into the mast of a boat that was crossing the river. Peter is shocked to witness the death of his girlfriend, but since there is nothing that can be done, Sam calls his friend to leave. Meanwhile, Isaac comes out of the bathroom startled by the screams coming from outside. Now he has no more time to get out of the vehicle and ends up falling into the water along with the bus. Another section of the bridge is destroyed and Sam asks Molly to use the metal beams to get to the other side. The girl makes it across successfully, then the man decides to go and help Olivia, who was lost, unable to see after losing her glasses. Sam guides her across the metal beams, however, as Olivia crawls toward Molly, she ends up slipping and falls into the water. Since the girl can swim, it is now easy to save herself. However, a car falls directly on top of her and crushes her head. As Nathan runs to cross the bridge, another cable comes loose and destroys his body. Dennis is the next to die, being burned alive. Peter and Sam jump over the railing and hang on, while the rest of the bridge is destroyed. A truck full of construction materials slips over the edge and steel rebar pierces Peter's body. The man's body falls to the base of the bridge and is completely destroyed before it reaches the water. Desperate, Sam continues trying to climb up, but is cut in half by the tiles that fall soon after. At that instant, the man comes back to reality and is startled by the vision he just had. He cuts his finger and feels the same sensation as in his vision. At this point, Sam realizes that he has just had a premonition and directs his co-workers to get off the bus. However, no one listens to him, as they believe that the man is just having a panic attack. Molly is the only one who decides to accompany him out of the vehicle and Dennis orders Peter to go after them. Candace also decides to go help and is followed by Nathan and Olivia. Isaac and Dennis get off the bus to find out what is going on and realize that the bridge has started to come loose. When they see the cracks in the concrete, they all run away and manage to get off the bridge safely, while the rest of the employees fall into the river with dozens of vehicles. Upon encountering that tragedy, the survivors question Sam about how he knew the bridge would fall, but the man is not sure what to answer. Agent Jim Block asks Sam the same question, and when Sam replies that he has had a vision, Block begins to suspect that the whole thing was premeditated. However, during the interrogation, the agent receives the report from forensics, which states that it was the force of the wind that damaged the bridge structure. Days later, the eight survivors participate in a group funeral to pay tribute to their 17 deceased co-workers. After the ceremony, a sinister guy named William Bloodworth appears and gives Sam and Peter a warning. The man directs them to be careful, for death does not like to be tricked. Peter doesn't pay much attention to this, but Sam gets bothered by this. At night, the man works in a restaurant. The owner of the establishment believes in the man's potential as a cook, so he offered him the internship in his restaurant in France. However, Sam does not yet know whether he will accept the offer. That night, after work, he goes to Molly's house. While having a cup of tea, they talk about the end of their relationship and Molly asks the man to take the job in Paris, because this is his dream. The next morning, Peter goes to follow his girlfriend's training session. Candace is a gymnast and says that she is feeling that she should not train that day because it is hard to concentrate after what happened. However, Peter reminds her that this is her last training session before the championship and says that she will do very well. They kiss and Candace prepares to begin her exercises. 
Meanwhile, the fans are annoyed because the air conditioner is malfunctioning. The girl rubs chalk on her hands so that she doesn't slip during her workout, and at this point she has a bad feeling. However, before Candace could give up and leave, her trainer orders her to start right away. At that moment the air conditioner starts to drip and the water falls next to a bare wire, forming a puddle around it. First, the young woman trains her balance. Just above, a screw comes loose and falls into the beam. Candace doesn't notice the object's presence, but luckily manages to dodge it during her stunts. At the end of the exercise, she walks towards the fan and is given a towel to dry her sweat. The puddle of water that has formed is almost reaching her feet. If this happens, Candace will be electrocuted. But once again the girl is in luck, and without realizing the danger around her, she throws in the towel and manages to avoid a tragic elimination. Now she will begin training on the bars. Meanwhile, Porter climbs on the beam and, seconds after starting her acrobatics, pierce her foot into the screw. Due to her injury, the girl ends up falling off the beam and knocks the chalk in front of the fan. The wind blows the dust into Candace's face. The girl leaps, but cannot land on her feet. Instead, her body folds in half during the fall and she dies. When Sam learns what has happened, he goes to find Peter and realizes that the man is completely upset. While trying to comfort his friend, Sam notices the presence of Bloodworth, who quickly disappears. The following week, the small group resumes activities in the office, which now has a much smaller staff. Isaac takes the opportunity to steal some of his deceased colleague's belongings. However, when he opens Robert's drawer, he ends up piercing his finger with a pin. Inside the drawer, he finds a gift certificate from the Ming Yun Spa and plans to go there to receive a relaxing massage. Just then, Nathan shows up with a bale of beer that he stole from Roy's truck. The man informs him that he needed to leave the factory, because that guy was driving him crazy. Then Peter arrives with a bottle of whiskey and everyone decides to have a few drinks in an attempt to reduce stress. Except for Isaac, who by this time was already arriving at the Ming Yun Spa. Upon entering the establishment, the man runs into the receptionist and intends to ask her out. He hands over his gift certificate and the woman asks him to accompany her to the physical therapy room. When Isaac gets there, the attendant asks him to lie down, close his eyes, and relax while she waits for the professional who will attend to him. Minutes later, an old woman appears and starts talking to him in Chinese. She cracks Isaac's entire body and the man screams in pain. At the office, Olivia gets a call and remembers that she has a doctor's appointment. She grabs her purse to leave and knocks over a picture frame that was on her desk. When she picks up the object from the floor, the young woman realizes that the glass has broken right over her face in the photo. After drinking a few glasses of whiskey, Peter regrets having encouraged Candace to continue with her training that day. The young man gets angry and throws the glass at the wall. Seeing his assistant's aggressive attitude, Dennis calls Agent Block and informs him of what happened. At the end of the massage, Ms. Yun uses a few needles to finish the therapy. After sticking dozens of needles into Isaac's body, the woman advises him to sleep for 30 minutes. Suddenly his phone starts ringing, but the old lady forbids him to use a cell phone during the session and puts the device on the other side of the room, next to a candle. As soon as Mrs. Yun leaves the room, a piece of incense falls onto the towel and a small fire starts. Isaac starts screaming for help and tries to get up, but ends up falling on his stomach, knocking over the gallon of alcohol used to sterilize the needles. While the man is passed out, the liquid spreads all over the room. Seconds later, he gets up and pulls out one of the needles that had pierced his chest. His body is completely injured and Isaac needs to get out of there immediately to seek medical help. However, as he approaches the door, his cell phone starts vibrating and knocks the candle to the floor. The fire spreads, but Isaac throws himself backwards and manages to find a safe zone. He believes he is safe with his body close to the wall, but to his surprise, a statue of Buddha, which was on the shelf just above his head, falls to the floor and crushes his skull. Sam tries to convince Molly to go with him to Paris when he is interrupted by Peter, who breaks the news that Isaac is dead. The man spots Bloodworth beside the ambulance and goes after him. At this point, the group discovers that this guy is the coroner. Bloodworth says that he has seen this happen before. A group of lucky people survive a disaster and then, one by one, death went after them. The man further tells them that the only way to change their fate is to eliminate another person. In this way, they will be able to take all the lifetime that the person who died had. When Bloodworth leaves, Sam tells him that in his vision, Molly was the only survivor, because he managed to save her. As such, death is not after her. Upon hearing this, Peter is furious that his friend saved Molly and left Candace to die. Angry, he leaves while the trio goes to tell Olivia about their new discovery. By this time, the girl is in a doctor's office, ready to enter the operating room to correct the problem in her eyes. Her dream is to never again need glasses for sight and now she is determined to make it come true. 
The girl lies down with a teddy bear on her lap while the doctor holds her head on the table. He then uses a device to hold Olivia's eye open during the surgery. By this point, the young woman is so nervous that she ends up gouging out the bear's eye while squeezing it. While checking the patient's chart, the doctor realizes that some information is missing and goes to talk to his assistant. At this time, a cup of water falls into the socket, which causes the laser machine to be deregulated. The power increases and Olivia tries to press the emergency button. However, the device falls to the ground and triggers the laser, causing a serious injury to the girl's eyes. The young woman uses her arms to defend herself as she tries to free her head. Despite her screams, no one listens. Luckily, Sam and Molly show up at the office and rush to the operating room to rescue their colleague. Once there, they find Olivia with a destroyed eye. The girl begs for help when she slips on the bear's eye and falls through the glass wall. Unfortunately, she does not survive the fall and still loses her other eye when she hits the ground. The couple heads to the hospital and Molly is in shock. The young woman asks Sam to stay with her that day and Block shows up, once again, to question them. The man claims to know that the couple is not responsible for all those eliminations, so he is there to ask what they know about the disasters that are happening. In this case, any information can be relevant for the agent to solve the case before more tragedies occur. Then, Sam tells that he believes that he and his friends should not have survived the bridge accident and now some supernatural force is writing that wrong. The next morning, when Molly wakes up, she realizes that her boyfriend has been up all night. She asks what he was doing and Sam tells her that he was remembering what happened in his premonition. He recalls that Candace was the first to die, and then Isaac. Then it was Olivia's turn and they realize that this same pattern was repeating itself. In the order of events, Nathan will be the next victim. The man is in the factory talking with Roy and they fall out, as usual. During the discussion, Nathan realizes that the hook is about to fall off and tries to warn Roy, but the man doesn't listen to him. When the metal object falls, the man tries to save his employee by pushing him away, but Roy ends up falling as well and dies with the hook going through his head. As chaos ensues in the factory, Peter goes to his boss's office and informs him that Isaac and Olivia are dead. The man tells him that this will also be their future if they don't do something. Peter says that now it's all or nothing, they need to eliminate someone to survive, and the manager gets scared. As he leaves, Dennis calls Agent Block again to inform him of the conversation he has just had with his employee. Peter walks to the factory, then Molly and Sam also show up to support their friend. Nathan tells him that a technical failure occurred and Roy ended up dying. Peter then asks if it was the man who eliminated him, and Nathan says that it was just an accident. However, Peter continues to press his colleague and Nathan eventually comes to the conclusion that he unintentionally caused Roy's death. As a result, he is left with the man's remaining lifespan. To find out if the theory really works, you have to wait to find out who will be the next in the group to die. In order, Dennis will be the next victim. The theory is proven true when the man arrives at the factory and is hit by a tool that has flown toward him at high speed. Hours later, Molly tries to stop Sam from going to work at the restaurant, but the man knows that if Death wants to go after him, it will be able to catch him anywhere. There is no escape. Before leaving, the young man asks his girlfriend to stop by the restaurant later, as he will prepare a special dinner for her. Upon entering the kitchen, Sam is faced with countless ways to die tragically, but tries not to let his fear get the better of him. One of his colleagues almost hits him over the head with a skewer, but the young man manages to dodge it in time. After cooking all night, he cleans up the kitchen and puts the spit away on the grill. Sam asks his boss for permission to cook for his girlfriend that night and says he will accept the offer of an internship in France. Hours later, while serving Molly dessert, the man tells her that he is going to Paris and intends to take her with him. Just then, Peter appears and knocks on the door. Block is watching the man from inside the car, as he has decided to keep an eye on him after receiving the phone call from Dennis. Sam opens the door and allows his friend to enter the restaurant. Peter sits down and tells him that he has been up all night wondering if he has the courage to eliminate someone else to keep his life. After pondering for long hours, he came to the conclusion that he could do it. Peter says that he went out for a walk, and every time there was an opportunity to take someone's life. Upon hearing this, Sam is startled and asks what his friend has done. Then Peter says that he didn't eliminate anyone, because he realized that he couldn't take the life of someone who didn't deserve to die. In that instant, he remembered Candace and thought that she didn't deserve to die, just like Olivia and Dennis. Peter then begins to express his anger that Molly is the only survivor. He points a gun at the woman, but Sam knocks the table over, preventing his girlfriend from being attacked. Just then, Agent Block hears the noise coming from the restaurant and calls for backup. The couple runs to hide in the kitchen and Sam asks Molly to go for help while he distracts Peter. Sam tries to convince his co-worker to abandon that idea, but Peter attacks him. The man states that he does not wish to eliminate anyone, but he does not want to die either. 
He turns on the stove and puts the cooking oil on to boil. He then goes after Molly, who takes a knife to defend herself. However, as she prepares to attack, Block appears and is shot by Peter. Now that the man has managed to free himself from the grasp of death, Molly asks him to leave. However, Peter claims that he needs to finish her off, as the young woman has just witnessed the death of a federal agent. He shoots Molly several times, but she manages to dodge. Just as Peter is about to take Molly's life, Sam jumps on top of him and they begin a hand-to-hand -hand battle. Peter then grabs his enemy's head and tries to dip it into the hot oil. However, Sam manages to get up and the fight continues. Peter takes a knife to attack him, but Molly appears and jumps on his neck. When the young woman's life hangs on a string, Sam shoves the skewer into Peter's chest and saves his girlfriend. Now Block's life has passed for him and the couple celebrates that they are both alive. Two weeks later, as they prepare to board their flight to Paris, Sam spots some desperate young men being thrown off the plane by security guards. A few minutes after takeoff, after cutting off his thumb, he realizes that something is wrong. The passenger next to him asks the stewardess why those monts were kicked off the plane, and the stewardess replies that one of those young men said he had a premonition and started shouting for all passengers to get off the plane. Upon hearing this, Sam becomes desperate. The plane's turbines start to burn and all the passengers panic. The walls of the aircraft are destroyed and people begin to be pulled out. Molly is one of them. Sam tries to hold on to his girlfriend, but the girl is pulled in and her body is torn in half by the wing of the plane. The aircraft then bursts into flames and the other passengers are burned alive, including Sam. After Roy's funeral, the factory employees gather at a bar. Nathan's supervisor tells him that, because of the life insurance, an analysis was made on Roy's body. In this way, the doctors discovered that he had a large aneurysm in his brain that could rupture at any time. At that instant, a piece of the plane Sam and Molly were in breaks loose from the rest of the aircraft and invades the bar, causing Nathan's final elimination. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.